Great start. Talking about kids, it's Friday time. As you get older, you feel more vulnerable, don't you? Can, can you relate to that? The older people, the, the judges are quite old. They can... Uh... <laughs> you can relate to this. It, no, it's quite Friday because you, you've now got the, the creepy clowns, haven't you? That's the latest craze thing. I've noticed that in Sheffield, I read the Sheffield uh, started out, they've got creepy clown hunters. So you're like, you're forming vigilante groups to... Uh, to track down the creepy clowns, and I, I think that's fair enough, to be honest with you, because you know, Halloween, it's, it's uh, an import from our American friends, but uh, quite Friday, I mean, you open the door at ha Halloween, and, and there's, uh, there's a 15 stone 10 year old, <laughs> ironically dressed as a skeleton, <laughs> and it's. Uh, so that's trick or treat and more fight or flight, isn't it? And uh, they're not so cocky when they've got a red dot between their eyes. Uh, am I right, police officers over there? They, that's right. So, okay. So, okay. Are you ready for your same night, folks? Yes. Yes. Okay. Give a warm welcome. This lady, I mean, she's got a very, very sensible job. And she really surprised me <laughs> with her story. So, I'll give a lovely. Funny business, welcome to Chris Sexton, everybody! Yeah! Hello, everybody. My name's Chris Sexton. By day, I'm an IT director. By night, a folk music enthusiast. Now, I can feel the energy in the room rise as you're all trying to work out which one of those two I'm going to talk to you about. There's no need to worry, because he answers both. <laughs> so there you are, I've come out. I'm a folky. Morris dancing, clog dancing, sword dancing. I've done it all. Think summer of love, but without the summer. <laughs> and usually without the love as well. <laughs> People are very cruel, I find, in this country about folkies. They say really nasty things, particularly about our musicians. Things like, what's the difference between an accordion and a trampoline? You take your shoes off to jump up and down on a trampoline. <laughs> oh, I've got more. What's the difference? Sorry, why is a banjo like a hand grenade? Because by the time you've heard the noise, it's too late. <laughs> How do you make two accordionists play in tune? <laughs> Shoot one of them. <laughs> well, what do you call a pretty girl on a banjo player's arm? A tattoo. <laughs> now, as well as dancing myself, I like to get other people to do it as well. If you've ever been to a barn dance or a Kaylee, I'm the bossy cow on the stage telling you what to do. And I've done some weird gigs in my time. Did one for a group of hippies. They didn't want to dance, just wanted to sit on the floor and groove a bit. At the end, they tried to pay us in beans. Mind you, from the look of them, I think somebody had hidden the money under the soap. Did a booking for a socialist workers group in a commune. Brilliant, got them all on the floor, all join hands, circle to the left, off they went. I shouted, right everybody, come back, circle to the right. No fucking way, we're gonna do anything to the right. <laughs> Weirdest booking I did was a dark and stormy January night in Doncaster. And that wasn't the scariest bit. I suppose when we read the contract and there was a clause in it, that said clothes optional, we should have been warned. Turned out we were doing a booking for 150 naturists. Got there, luckily they were all fully dressed. And then the organizers walked towards me, lovely middle-aged couple, stark naked. Very difficult having a conversation with them about the format of the evening, when you're trying desperately not to look below chin level. And all I could think, was what they'd said to the teenage kids that they left for the evening. Now then, lads, me and your mum were off out to jump up and down, stark bullet naked with 150 strangers. <laughs> but be good, don't do anything we wouldn't do. <laughs> so anyway, there they all were, completely starkers, eventually. They all stood up when I asked them to come and dance. They all folded the clothes up, put them in a sports bag. Took out of the sports bag a towel. Put the towel on the seat and sat on it. Apparently, that's nature's etiquette. Well, really? 
It's a bad manners to plonk your naked sweaty, ar sweaty arse down on somebody else's furniture. <laughs> well, who knew that? I think we probably all did. So there they all are in front of me, Starkers. At this point in the proceedings, I would normally say, grab your partner and come onto the dance floor. <laughs> I thought I'd better just rephrase that. <laughs> anyway, I got them all dancing eventually. Led a whole new meaning to the word swing to the right and swing to the left. <laughs> but you can imagine 150 naked people in Doncaster flailing their arms and legs around, trying to dance. It was less Full Monty and much more Night of the Living Dead, the musical. <laughs> but I was lucky. I had Andrew right in front of me at the front, helping me keep in time or as I like to call him, the human metronome. <laughs> I can tell you, all human life was there. Every size and shape of every bit of the body. Large and small, smooth and wrinkly. Some of them could have done with an iron before they came out. And I was very worried that some of the ladies were gonna give themselves black eyes before we'd finished dancing. That much willy in one room, I tell you, is a sight to be remembered or actually forgotten. My friend Rebecca, who was in the band, said it was more willy than she'd ever seen in her life. And she used to be a Club 1830 rep in Magaluf. <laughs> they say size doesn't matter. It clearly did, such so as some of the gentlemen. They hadn't got like that on their own. There'd been a little bit of uh, fiddling with a flesh flute going on, if you know what I mean. Some of them were so small, I think sperm would have found it a tight squeeze. <laughs> and there wasn't a pubic hair in sight. They were all waxed to be an inch of, well, an inch of everything, actually. They looked like they were auditioning for a remake of Chicken Run. <laughs> I'm making light of it now. For a few weeks afterwards, I'd wake up screaming and sweating in the night. Doctor said it was the worst case of post-traumatic Cayley disorder he'd ever seen. <laughs> I had to keep time the band to play more music. They said, why? I said, well, when you're dancing, okay, they, you sort of gallop down the, in the middle of the set, and then I shout gallop back, and normally everybody does gallop back, because normally all the bits come with them. When you're naked, all the tits and willies were still heading south. <laughs> Centrifugal force had taken over. I couldn't get anybody to come back. Some of you might be worried that some of the elderly gentlemen, as we speeded up the night, might have fallen over. No chance of that. It's amazing how much a dangly scrotum lowers your centre of gravity. <laughs> Luckily, there was an interval. I went over at the interval to find my husband. He was sitting in a corner, bored stiff. <laughs> Clearly trying to find something to do. He said, um, how many genital piercings have you counted? I said, counted? I'm not even looking. How many have you counted? Eight, he said. I said, how have you done that? He said, I'm sitting down. I've got a completely different line of sight to what you've got. <laughs> there was a buffet, typical Doncaster food, pork pie, egg sandwiches. You have to get there early though. The table was this height, crotch height. <laughs> I mean, I talked about towel etiquette. What about not getting your bollocks in the coleslaw etiquette? <laughs> One guy hoovered up the entire table of ring donuts as he went down. I wouldn't mind, but there weren't ring donuts when he started. They had to take the cocktail sticks out. The number of genital piercings was going up. And worryingly, at the end of the night, there was a bowl of pickled nuts that wasn't there at the beginning. So when I was writing this, I thought, well, I ought to be able to get some more jokes out of the penis in the buffet sort of scenario. So, you know, I told you at the beginning I was an IT director. I spent a lot of my time trying to stop students downloading porn. So what did I find myself doing? Sat at my work computer, typing food and cock into Google. <laughs> Should have known what I was going to get, I suppose. Luckily, I've cleaned it all up now. That's the computer, clearly. First big link I found, 50 ways to eat cock. <laughs> now you may laugh, it was a recipe book. Second one, a recipe for penis stew. Apparently it's a hangover cure in Bolivia. 
think you'll find it's a hangover cure in most places in the world, actually. <laughs> and the next one, and I kid you not, this is true, it was a link to a web page called Cooking with Cum, <laughs> written by a semenologist. <laughs> and no, Cooking with Cum. I'm a bit scared to add paprika. <laughs> it had got a whole section in it on cocktails. It said that fresh semen was available behind most bars. Not the sort of bars I go in. Mind you, the next time a waiter gives me a cocktail with a cheeky wink, I'm gonna be worried. There was another section in it, which was very handy for our lactose intolerant friends and how to make cocktails without cream. Anyway, we'll get back to the dancing. Rather spoiled some of the dances I was gonna do. Strip the willow was a waste of time. I completely bottled out of doing one called uh, Making Ends Meet. I did do one called Bottoms Up. <laughs> that was good crack. <laughs> Halfway through the night, I had to demonstrate a figure. It's called a basket. Four people put their arms around each other, spin round and round as fast as they can. I found myself between two elderly gentlemen. Never gone home from a Kaylee before with bruised thighs. <laughs> Halfway through the second half, bit of excitement, a mobile phone went off. Everybody looked at each other suspiciously up and down till we saw the guy in the corner with a combination of a pained expression and a smile on his face. Don't know where it was, but it was clearly on vibrate. <laughs> I must have done something right, because he actually asked me back to do this gig several times. It hasn't affected me at all, although I do wash me towels more often than I used to for some reason. <laughs> Right, that's it. I think I've had enough now. I think you probably have. You know, I told you about that uh, cocktail book I found earlier. Well, it said in it that semen adds a personal touch to most cocktails. So I'm getting off now, and I'm going to hope my husband splashed out on a white Russian for me. Thank you. <laughs> My name's Chris Sexton. Good night.